those people who leave, and I will post it. So differential equation, I'm going to do a couple of these, just a couple, because we've already done this lesson. You have the packet. The big, last thick packet, yep. It was after the volumes, it was after areas. Well, it may be before volumes, who knows, I don't know, I may have skipped this on purpose. So start beginning and look, or look in the table of contents there, differential equations. Did anybody find it so you can help out those that are looking for it? Did you find it? Five seventy six. All right. So to be a, a differential equation meant that you have a derivative symbol here, dy dx is equal to an equation. Oh, and I, you know what? I didn't even let me let me. Uh, I don't even think I even turned it on here either. Pause it. All right. Here it goes again. So differential equation is a derivative is equal to some equation. That is y prime. And the reason why we call it separation is because remember how we solved it for dy and left it as 6x squared plus 6x minus 2, and that dx went up here. Remember that? Yeah. So you got a dy equals something of dx, which is the beginnings of taking in integration because if I was to solve this equation, basically what I'm going to do is integrate both sides. Integrate both sides, and what do I get is, when I integrate a, there's an imaginary one sitting here, when you integrate one, which is one times y to the zero power, it becomes what? Y, y. that's right, equals two. And I integrate this bad boy, and it becomes 6x cubed over 3, which becomes 2x cubed. 6x squared over 2 becomes 3x squared. And then uh, what happens to the plus 2? 2x plus 2x. Just like the 1, 1 became a 1y, one the 2 becomes a 2x, and there's a constant of integration because there's no limits. Uh, no, it's a plus. This time I got it right. I could have easily had it wrong. So we're not done yet because I need to find out what C is. So I take this as an ordered pair of a negative 1 comma 2, and I plug that in to get a 2 equals to a negative 1 cubed is still negative. That becomes a negative 2 plus a negative 1 squared is positive. So it's times a 3. So that's a positive 1 times 3. three. A negative 1 times a 2 is a minus 2 plus a c, and then I solve it for c, so a negative 2, negative 2 is a negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1, so it's 2 equals to a negative 1 plus c, c must be a, uh, if I did everything right. So then what we do is, you solve the differential equation, you had a constant, you used the initial conditions that they gave you, we plugged it in, and now we rewrite the whole equation. y is really equal to 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x plus a 3. Notice, if they had given me a different initial, initial point, you'd have a different equation. You're going to see why in a minute. Why is there so many equations possible? There's hundreds of equations possible. He could have given me all sorts of ordered pairs. Let's do one more here. So I separate the variables by putting the dx over here. That gives me dy equals to 1 plus 12x to the 3 halves over 2x to the half dx. I'm going to integrate both sides. That comes out to y. It always comes out to y equals to. Now, this looks really hard. Let's see. Let's see. How would I integrate this? Uh, I probably would break it into two fractions. 1 over 2x to the half makes it 1 half x to the negative 1 half. 2x to the 3, or I'm sorry, not 2, 12x to the 3 halves over 2x to the half. 12 over 2 is 6. What's x to the 3 halves divided by x to the half? What's that rule? It's just an x. Do you know how she did that? 
she subtracted the exponents because they're the same basis. X to the half dx. Okay, that looks easier to do. I was hoping it was a du over u problem, but I looked at it and said that's not du over u. So it was old school, break it apart into smaller pieces. So y now is equal to, let's see, 1 half x to the negative half, if I add 1 to the half, becomes a half. Yes? 12 divided by 2? 3 halves minus a half? Oh. Wait, did, did, maybe that's what she said. Is that what you said? Yeah, I'm the one that wrote a half for some odd reason. I don't know why I did that. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, 1 half x to the half, but I've got to divide by a half, which means technically I'm just multiplying by a 2. Plus, thank you for fixing that, because that now becomes 6x squared divided by 2 gives me 3x squared. It's all integrated. That's the antiderivative all the way across, plus my constant of integration. Let's clean it up. y equals to the 1 half times 2 cancels. That gives me the square root of x plus 3x squared plus my constant. There's my ordered pair, 0 comma 2. So the 2 goes here. What's the square root of 0? What's 3 times 0 squared? What's 0 plus 0 plus c? C. There's my constant. So the actual answer that he wants is y equals to the square root of x, or x to the half, plus 3x squared plus a 2. Boom. And we did these before. I hope you remember doing these. I could do these all day. I actually love solving differential equations now, now that I had a class a long time ago that I should have failed, and I didn't, they gave me a C, and I didn't deserve a C. I think I could do the class better now. Yes, oh my God. This is just the very basics. These are called ordinary differential equations that are separable. There's whole sets of differential equations you can't separate. They're, you have to, they're just ugly. Is there, is there well, that's, this is a review. We've done this before, right? Yes. The real thing I want to do is, is you yeah, have the lesson going over those. But, but what happens is, let's see, let me skip this right now, because this is just an AP problem that where you solve it. And I would love to have time to come back and do it. I want to take you to this picture here, where we are graphing the differential equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to this, get to the nit and gritty for you guys that are, hope it's still recording because I don't remember if I hit it. Yes, it is. Uh, that's called a, a, it's just dots at the ordered pairs because this is my differential equation. And what he's saying is my slope is always x minus 1. So if I grab any ordered pair, I'm just going to grab all the dots he has here, because that, he's, they're going to give you like six or eight dots. If I grab this dot right here, that ordered pair is 1 comma 1. The x value is a 1, so I plug it in here. What is the slope at 1, 1? Zero. zero. It's, yeah, you're so smart. It's 0. So what I do at 1, 1, I make a little segment that has a slope of a 0. Let me try the one next to it, at 2, 1, at 2, 1. What's the slope at 2, 1? That slope is a 1. So I go to 2, 1, and I tried going rise up, 1 to the right, 1, two, one up, 1 right, rise over run. That looks like this. Let me do 1, comma 2, 1, comma 2. Yeah, 1, 1, the slope was 0. 2 comma 1, the slope was a, a 1. Now I'm doing 1 comma 2, and I'm using this equation every time. What's the slope now? Yeah. 0 again. So at 1 comma 2, it's a 0. What do you think happens at 1 comma 3? Yeah. Oh, so you start seeing a pattern. What happens at 1 comma yeah. negative 1? Yeah. What happens at 1 comma negative 2? Yeah. Oh, so I got those all done. He has no dots on the y and x axis. I'm not really sure why. So I'm just going to just do the dots we have. 
But, but technically, if I didn't know that, I might say, what happens at 1? 1, 0. It looks like I'm, it, it could possibly be the same, right? The y doesn't matter, right? So what well, doesn't matter, you're right. Only the x is in this one. Let's do this one here. How about 2, negative 1? Oh, it's a 1 also. How about 2, negative 3? So it's, it, these are all parallel, you see that? How about 2, 2? 2, 3. They're all parallel. Let's move over to, I'm pretty sure there's dots on these others. I, 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 I'm going to put it in a different color just to see what happens when I solve the equation. I have a feeling that it should come out like that, but I don't know why he didn't put dots. If he didn't tell me not, that there was nothing there, I would probably just put the dots there. But there, sometimes there's a reason there is no dots. But right now I can't see any problem. So I'm going to put them for now. I can erase the red ones if I have to. Uh, let's do the, at the negative one. They're all going to be negative twos, right? So I got to go rise over run. Up two, left one. So I'm pointing to this one over here. It's steeper. How about at, well, I did the right one. One, negative one, negative two. It's also negative 2, so it's steeper and it's parallel to that one. How about negative 1, negative 2? It seems like it'd be parallel. I'm putting it red in case he wants me to get rid of it. How about at negative 1, 1? Still negative 2. Still parallel? Still parallel? Still parallel? What do you think is happening on the negative 2 ones? What happens to all those? Negative. negative three. So what do graders go on to see you do? If you called all these a negative two, then he better make this one steeper. So I got to go rise up three, one. Here you go. One, two, three, left, one. You see how it's steeper? And they're all, they're all like that. Just make them all parallel. If you can see that. So what's happening here? Well, interesting thing. Notice that the segments drawn on the grid would form a bunch of parabolas. Oh, yes, you sir. see that? Yes, so you remember how that plus C could change based on your initial condition? You're supposed to imagine that inside, if you were to do a magnetic field, look inside. Look inside. There's a zero slope. That's where the vertex would go. Look at that. You see all these different family of parabolas? They're family of parabolas. They're one big happy family. They're one big happy family. Whole bunch of them. The only thing changes is the plus C. The plus C caused them to go up and down. So there are a whole bunch of parabolas in there. That's a slope field. Now, you're not really supposed to draw all those green curves. I'm just showing it to you. Technically, I should probably get rid of all of those just because they really aren't. He wasn't asking for all of those. But you did see those, right? All right. What, what the question always is, is he'll always do this. Draw a curve that goes through. I'll make it up. Uh, 2 comma negative 3. So you go to 2, down to a negative 3, and you got to realize, oh, 2, negative 3 is down here. Then my, my curve probably was this. Like that, you draw one of them. He'll always tell you wh which one you want to draw. That's a slope field. Let me see what he had you doing at the top of this paper. A slope field is a pictorial representation of all possible solutions. Oh, so what happens is this differential equation, check this out. You're going to be so happy. Watch. Let's solve it. dy equals to x minus 1 times dx. Integrate, integrate. y equals to x squared over 2 minus x plus c. Check it out. 
Isn't that a parabola? Yeah. And doesn't it look like it shifted to the right? The vertex is to the right or to the left? To the right. Went to the right. How do I know? Minus x. Justin, you're so smart. That meant it shifted to the right. I'm just basing my Algebra 2 experience. There, your family of parabolas. So if I said, remember I said uh, at 2, I could plug in x is 2, and y is a negative 3, just for fun, at 2, negative 3, and find out my equation was 3 equals 2, 2 minus 2 plus c. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to give me. C equals to 3. So if you go to your calculator and you graph this equation, guys, shh, y equals to x squared over 2 minus x plus 3, it should be this parabola down here. It should be that parabola down there. Because this is a family of parabolas. This is a particular solution. That's called a particular solution. Unfortunately, if it's on the AP exam, for that picture, they only give you like two points for all that work to create your slope field. Then they give you, then they give you six points for solving the differential equation. Then they give you another two points or three points for finding the exact equation where he wants it. I just did it all. That's nine points worth. Two, three, another three, whatever. Let's do another one here. Where did you get that point? I made it up. Look at this one, though. He didn't give me one here either. So I just made it up to show you what you could do with it. This is very typical on the AP test. They give you these points. You can assume that you have some points here at the axes. You can do them to see what happens. And this problem I cannot solve by hand because I cannot separate this. Whenever you're taking x minus y, you can't separate the x and the y. You're stuck by only getting an idea with the calculator. Okay? So that's why he doesn't have us solve it. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some order pairs. I'm going to list them here. I'm going to go 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 2. When I get done, I'm going to do the, the 1, comma, 0, the 1, comma, 1, 1, comma, 2, 1, comma, 3, 1, comma, negative 1, 1, comma, negative 2. So what you do is get all your ordered pairs ready and then start plugging into this equation to find the slopes. What's the slope of 0, negative 2? What? 0, negative 2. You're going to plug it in. 0, minus, two? minus, okay, 2. So at 0, negative 2, I need a slope of 2. That means I'm aiming for this point right here. You see that? 1, 2, 1 over. I'm aiming there, so do this, like that. How about 0, negative 1? What would this slope be? 0, negative 1. I shouldn't write there. I'm writing top of my equation. I can't see it. 0, negative 1. What's that slope going to be? 0 goes here, minus a negative 1. What does that become? So I'm aiming 1, uh, one up, 1 over. I'm aiming, I'm aiming over here. See that? It's not as steep as this one. What happens at 0, 0? Zero? Zero. 0. What happens at 0, positive 1? No. Nope. Negative 1. So now i got to go aim 1 over, 1 up, 1 up, 1 over. I'm aiming over here, but it's negative. See that? Negative 1. Negative 1. How about 0, 2? 0 minus 2. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. So that goes 1, 2 up, 1 over. I'm aiming up steeper. So look at that picture. 
Steep, steep, not as steep, not as steep, zero. So let's do the, the line of x equals to 1. 1, 0. What does that give me? 1, 0. 1, positive. Up 1, up over. I'm aiming for that point there. 1, 1. I saw that. Another 0. Look at that. Oh, this is really weird. I think if you start looking at it, if you've done Mr. Posick's lab on magnetic fields, that's what this is. It's like a magnetic field. Yeah. One, two. Oh, one. Okay, now I'm aiming up back one, one this way. I'm going that way. One, three. Negative two. Negative two. So it's one, two, one over. So it's steep. I don't think I did zero, three, did I? I didn't do zero, three. That's, that reaches to a three. One, two, three. That's really steep. Yep. How about one, negative one? One, minus, minus one. It is a two. One, two, one. So it looks like that. See what's happening? It looks like, it looks like everything is flowing this way. See that? You see how it looks like it's flowing this way? Like a magnetic flow. Oh, this one? Look at this. That way. That, you see how it's, how it's making a pattern? Kind of like a set of roads. Set of roads. Oh. Uh, how about one? Did I do one negative one? We did, right? Did I mess it up? One negative one was a two, wasn't it? Well, that was one negative one. How about one negative two? That's a three, isn't it? That point's way up there. Let's do the negative one line. X is negative one. What happens at negative one, zero? Negative one minus zero. Still negative one. So one, one so it looks like this. How about negative one, one? Negative one minus minus one. Anybody see what happened? Right here, negative one, one. Negative one minus minus one. Isn't it a zero? Yes. Yeah, it's another zero. How about a negative one, two? Negative one minus two. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it is, a, it is a minus three, isn't it? Yes. One, two, three over one. It's steep. It's, it's filling in the pattern here that I already was thinking about. How about negative 1, 3? That's a negative 4, isn't it? Real steep. How about a negative 1, negative 1? Negative 1 minus minus 1. Zero. Negative 1 minus minus. It is 0. So that goes to 0 also, right? Negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1 minus minus 3. Uh, two. 1, 2, 1. It aims up for the origin. Well, look at that. Now, this is way more points than they have you do on the AP test. They'll like, give you like six points to do. Okay? Yeah. So you got the idea? Yeah. That, that actually was an AP graph they had you do one year. Multiple choice question. Oh, look at that. It's already done for you. You got to figure out which one that picture goes with. Somebody give me a hint. What would you do to figure out which of those works? Plug in some points. Like, go ahead and give me a point that you see in the graph. Zero, zero should be a, a zero, right? Which of these give me a, a zero? Does this one give me a zero? Does this one give me a zero? Does this one give me a zero? Yeah, zero. Oh, zero, zero is not a good one. Except for e. Oh, E doesn't. Okay, good, good. Zero, that I can do what with it? Scratch it off. We know it's not E. Hey, that helped. Got rid of one. Good job, Justin. Yep. Well, I know. Well, give me another one. How about, how about, 
two, three. So one, two, one, two, three. Give me an approximation for that slope. Um, a steep one. Steep one. Steep two, three. What would two, three give you here? Safe. That's steep. What would two, three give you here? Two times three is six. Six three, minus three. three. Three, it's not as steep. Nine. Huh? One oh, this one's a nine? Nine, yeah, and an eight. Oh, that's not helping a lot. I'm kind of confused. Maybe that would tell me I might get rid of the uh, B, maybe. Oh, wait, why don't we just use negative one? Let's why? Because it's a zero. So All negative ones are zero. Good idea. Oh. All negative ones are zero. So let me get rid of my scratch here. All negative ones should give me a zero. Does this give me a zero at a negative one, one? I'm going to go negative 1, 1 right here. Let me do negative 1, 1. Does that give me a 0? No, it's not that one. Negative 1, 1. Yes. Yeah, negative 1, 1 gives me a negative 1 minus 1. That one works. How about this one? Negative 1 plus a 1. Wait, wait, wait. Negative 1, 1. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Negative 1, 1 gives me a negative 1. Minus one gives me a negative two, so that's not it. This one does did work. How about this one? Negative one one. Negative one plus one. I think that one works. Yes. So I'm down to C and D. Let's try another one. You still want to stick on that that one here? How about negative one five? Negative one five. Let's check out negative one five. Which of these still give me a zero? C, negative one times five is a negative five. Negative five plus five. That, that works. How about D? Negative one times five is a negative five. Negative five plus a negative one is not. So I think C would be my answer. Yes. I've been wrong before. Because I'm not as smart as Gavino, who saw that this whole column is always negative, always zero. I think it's right. You think so? Yeah. Here yeah, is. Yeah, I know. Here is exactly 2004, question number five. So let me, let me do this. Let's do this one, and then the rest of you who are testing can take off to go eat. And Deal? Yes. We keep going. Because i got to keep recording so they have a copy. All right. So this has you do everything. Look at it. It has you do these points. It has you solve the differential equation. This one is sketch it. This is solve it. This is find a particular solution. This is the trifecta. Everything that you need to do with the differential equation is right here. And so here goes. Let's see. I need some, and I only have to do the six dots. I only have to do the six dots that he's given. He says that. Wait, he says 12. Yes, there's some on the x-axis. Oh, I didn't see him. One, two, three, four. Okay, there they are. They are, I didn't, if I zoom in, I can see them. We got to do all, all the dots. So let's, uh, let's break it up. Somebody do the, we'll start here. You do, I'm going to count you. Bella, you're doing the first dot. Yes, sir. Cynthia, you're doing the second dot. Okay. Gavino, you're doing the third. I am? Gavino, you're doing the fourth one right here. Fourth. Right here. Are sure? the bottom and one or the top one? Top. Top. top, 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 top wait, wait, wait. It was one, two, three, four. It's one, count, two, three, four. Bottom up. Bottom up. Uh, Caleb, you're at zero, zero. I got it. Joseph, you're doing zero, one. Amy, you're doing zero, two. Leona, you're doing zero, three. Marone, you're doing one zero. I'm not there. You may not get one. You know, you'll get one. You're next in a minute. Justin, you're doing one one. Yes, you are. You're doing one, Talia. You're doing one three, and and uh, Andrew's doing one zero. I mean one three. You're doing one two. You are. Because yeah, because you were the third one, and and Andrew's behind you. That way we can get this done, the graph. See, he left at the right time. He didn't get one.
Y yes. Y That's y minus 2 times x to the fourth power. So your y was a 0. 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. And then a negative 1 to the fourth is a 1. So what'd you get? So if she's right, negative 2 means aim 2 up, 1 left. Looks like that. Cynthia? Negative 1. Negative 1. 1, 1. So it's not as steep. Actually, hers was steeper, and yours is not as steep. Uh, behind you. I got zero. Zero. Gavino. One. One up, one over. It looks like that. Caleb. Zero. zero. Oh, zero. Zero. Uh, Joseph. Oh, zero. Another zero. Amy. Zero. Oh, Friona. Zero. Oh, my gosh. Friona? Yeah, I did. Friona? I can't say her name. Riola. Fi. O. De. De. Re. Fi. O. Rela. Like Cinderella. Maroon. Negative two. One, two over one. It's steep. Whoop, that's not steep enough. Uh, Justin. Negative one. Negative one. One, one, so it's that way. Uh, Talia. Another zero. Andrew. A two. One, two over one. Oh, we got a one. One, one, so it's not as steep. All right, so if you look at it, you can see that there's some pattern in there. You can see that there's these flat ones, and then I think all, all of these were flat. So then that would, you probably only get like two or three points for all that. B, while the slope field in part A is drawn only at 12 points, it's undefined at every point. It is defined at every point. In other words, you can use any X's you want. Describe all the points in the XY plane which the slopes are negative. So now you're supposed to say, where are they all negative? You, you, he actually is going to want you to list all the x, y points that are negative. It's that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yes or no? Guys, tell you. You're listing, you're listing all of them that are negative. It's that one, that one. Oh, yeah, that was positive. I got excited. Where are the negative? These two. That's negative. That's negative. And what? The bottom two of one. One zero and one. One zero. One zero is negative, and one one is negative. So those four. Okay. And C. Find a particular solution. So that means I'm going to have to take dy equals to x to the fourth, y minus two dx. Now watch. The reason that this one is separable, I can move this component right here. I can divide both sides by it, and it looks like this. dy over y minus 2 equals x to the fourth dx. Because if you're going to integrate both sides, you've got to separate the y's and the x's. Y's goes with the dy, x's go with the dx. The other problem we did, I could not separate them, okay? So now I'm going to integrate both sides. Now, the hard part, when I integrate this, it's a, it's a 1 over this. So how do I integrate that? DU over you, DU over you. What's U? It's a DU over U. So this is a DU over U. If U equals Y minus 2, du has to be a dy. Check it out. So how do I integrate du over u? Say it. Natural log. Natural log of what? Uh, u. Which is y minus 2. Equals 2. That's the easy part. 
x to the 5 over 5 plus c. Now, did he give me initial condition? Zero what? Zero, zero. So I'm going to do at zero, zero. Here goes. Natural log of zero minus two. Now you see why I'm doing absolute value? Yes, sir. Because see the zero minus two? You can't take the natural log of a negative number. That's right. Zero over five is still zero. So C is the natural log of two. Da da. So the actual equation is. Oh, I'm not even done yet. It's natural log of y minus 2 equals to x to the 5 over 5 plus natural log of 2. The reason it's not done is you've not solved it for y. That's the hard part. How do I solve this for y? And I think you can do it in one step and get full credit. One step. It'll be ugly, but they have to give you credit. How do I get rid of the natural log to get the y out of there? Multiply by e? I think I know what you know what you're doing, but it's not multiply. It's exponentiation. That's right. Watch this, Talia. To get y out of there, we exponentiate both sides. That gives me y minus two equals e e to the x to the five over was it x to the five over what five plus natural log of 2. Add 2 to both sides. This is a perfectly good equation to get full credit. It's just ugly. But you could use it. Do what? Yeah, well, that's what I did, though. I put parentheses, I put the I put the e here and I put that in parentheses to say I'm expect so then when I added two, there's your ugly equation. Is the natural log of two part of the exponent? Yes it is. So if you want to put that in a parenthesis to make sure that we know that's yeah, or make this one stand out as a plus two. Christina said a good point. Make sure your plus two is not part of the exponent. Could we clean this up some more? We could, but I know people are going to go and eat their lunch. But this would work. Did I answer the question at least? I did. I found a particular solution. So there's nine points. Maybe they could have given you three points for that and then three points for this part here for taking that uh, derivative of the integral. That's a lot of work. Usually what they do is they give you points for doing the, the integral. They give you points for separating. They give you points for finding C. They give you points for rewriting the equation. So if I don't see you again, you got plenty of stuff. There's another AP problem. This one says do the slope field, find the solution, and there's an initial condition. Then he says, oh, do a limit of something. That's kind of interesting why they're adding that to it. That'll be fun. That's probably 3, 3, and 3. I gave you another one. These are all released slope field problems. Everybody in this class with just today's lecture could get 5 points out of 9 just with today's, without even doing the advanced thing they always have you do. But this one, yeah, you can separate that one too. Another one, a whole bunch of them, guys. I don't even know if I need a lecture anymore. You get six. And here's my advice to you guys. Go th make sure you're only going to use 15 to 20 minutes per problem. But if you want to maximize your points, go through all six problems and do A and B. A and B, A and B, A and B, A and B. They are the easiest. If you don't know A but know B, then pretend you know the answer for A. Write the answer, X equals to 3. Then use it into the B answer. Even if you're wrong, you'll get full credit for B. 
But that's my advice to you. A and B, A and B. But I, I know some people don't want to quit a problem. They're on a roll. But, but if you can get the easy points first, then come back and go and do all the C's. You'll maximize your points. It's just hard to get started and going again. But I've had people come back and tell me, sorry, I did what you said. I went and did all the A's and B's first. Felt really good on those. That meant they're already passing. They're already passing the test. Now that I feel like I've already got credit for the test, I come back, I'm relaxed, I do part C's. They're a little hard. If it's too hard, I just move on. The first thing you do is A's and B's across. Then come back, pick up the C's. And Amelis, you're different though. You may be really loving this number three problem and you do the A, the B, the C, and the D and you're like, wow, I'm done. But not all of us can get the last part done on every problem. I guarantee the last part is always the hardest part. So if you can get the easy stuff on every part, I don't want you to run out of time for easy points. It's like if you're picking apples from a tree, why are you going to climb to the top branch with a lot of apples close to us? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to stop recording. This is going to be posted online, so uh, B-Day is going to get it.